Welcome everyone, make yourself comfortable, for the next couple of minutes we'll embark on a journey to the core. Thank you for joining me. Today we'll cover some look for Jay's core concepts. First, we are going to create the resource directory under source main. Here we are going to create a new file called log4j2.xml. In order to identify the XML version to use, we are going to paste this line at the beginning of the file. The main XML tag for configuring log4j is the configuration tag. Now let's introduce the properties section. Similarly to Maven, here we can define properties to be used in the rest of the file. Let's now define the default pattern property. Here we are going to create the pattern for the loggers we are going to build. Everything that starts with a percentage sign is called a pattern. The highlight pattern is for introducing color to our messages. Everything inside curly braces is the body of the pattern. So all of these will have colors. Relative is the relative milliseconds that has passed since the JVM started till the creation of a particular message. And these are modifiers. We can change the format of the patterns with modifiers. Like for example, we are going to use six digits for the relative millisecond. Level will print out the level of the login message, like for example, info, trace, etc. Markers are like categories for login messages. The logger, the method where the log message was created, this is very expensive, so be careful. The message, and we can even introduce environment variables like my user in this machine, and variables from the JVM, like the Java version we are using. Now we are going to introduce the default log directory path property. This will be the base folder for our logs. We're going to use target logs as our base folder for the logs. The appenders are in charge of sending messages to our loggers. We're going to create a console appender for sending messages to a console or terminal. We have two choices, system out or system error. We are going to use system out this time. And for the pattern to be used for the console logger messages, we are going to use the one we defined in the properties. Let's create a file appender. This one, instead of using the terminal, will send the messages to a file. Now, for the file name, we are going to use our base directory that we define in the properties. And for the file itself, we are going to call it shoppingcart.log. Similarly, we are going to use the pattern we define in the properties. Finally, for the loggers, we are going to configure the root logger, which is present in every single invocation of log4j. We are going to capture every single message, that's why we are using all. And we are going to reference the file appender. For the console appender, we are going to introduce a logger which name will match our package. So the logger will only capture login messages that came from classes inside that package and will only process trace messages. For the appender, we are going to use the console appender that we defined above. That's all the configuration that we need. Now, we are going to introduce tracing to counter inventory implementation and jumping car implementation. Basically, we are going to see when we enter a method and when we exit it. First, let's create our logger for the shopping car class. And we can obtain a new logger through the log manager class. Now, Let's call the logger.trace entry method in order to log whenever we enter this method and we are going to capture the entry message that this method returns.
And for tracking the exit, we can invoke the logger.traceExit method and we are going to use the entry message we captured before plus the return value. We are going to repeat this for every single method. And this is the final result. But you can see we are using messages in the trace entry method and we are passing arguments in order to enrich the message. Even for those methods that are void, we can trace the exit of the method. And even for those that has no parameters, we can trace the entry. For inventory implementation, it's a similarly story. I know what you're thinking, this is a lot of awful and repetitive work, we can do it better, and we will in future videos when we cover aspect J. Counter is a very similar story as the last two. I want to show you something, we can even trace when we throw errors like in line 48. We can call the logger.drawing method and that's it. Let's repeat the same for the rest of the drawings. Now, if we go to our test and we run it, we can see all the tracing messages. Here, in the getTestData method, we can see that the first method we call is the inventory set amount method, and we are adding 5 mocha forms. Remember that this method relies on the setCount method of the counter. As you can see, we are adding 5 mocha forms. And since we are relying on the set count method, that's why we have this message here. For the add into cart utility method, we are decreasing in inventory and increasing in shopping cart. And we can see this. Decreasing by one, increasing by one. We can see the same thing in our terminal if we run MBN clean test. Here is the same tracing logs as before. And if we go to the file, we can see them there as well. Now, if we introduce an error in our flow, like for example, setting the amount of mocha font to minus one, we can see that we are throwing an error. Now, let's cover the pieces of our message. First, we can see the relative number, the level, trace in this case, the marker, enter or exit in these cases, the logger, the method name, you have to be careful, this is a very expensive pattern, the message of our log message, the user of this machine that run the program, not sign in this case and new information about the JDK, Java 11. For seeing the error message we are trying, we can use this trick. Basically, I'm detecting if the whole message is trying, and if that's the case, 
I remove the spaces and I introduce the message of the section. And there you go. Now we can see the message of the section. Now as you turn, download the code from the link in the description and experiment with Log4j. Remember to share your experience in the comments. And as always, have fun. Thank you for joining me on my journey to the core. See you soon.